This is the Insta360 Flow, the most well-designed phone gimbal that I've ever used. It is packed with features for shooting super smooth cinematic footage on the go. It's super smart with AI tracking that remembers the subject even if it becomes obscured. And it's really easy to use and control with the touch sensitive smart wheel. All in this super compact collapsible design that unfolds and is ready to shoot with in just a couple of seconds. I love this thing. I recently took it with me on a trip and there is so much that I have to talk about, but I am just gonna focus on some of my favorite features. So let's take a look. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jack. I make videos about all things tech. And just to say, Insta360 did send me this for free to review, but this video is not sponsored by them. But regardless, I have just genuinely been really impressed by it. It's really intuitive and really simple to use. It's perfect for travel videos, for capturing those daily moments. It's great for content creators, for vlogging or making shorts, or even just as a tool for capturing some cinematic shots on your phone that you just wouldn't be able to do handheld. I've linked to it in the description if you wanna check it out. And that is an affiliate link which helps support me and the channel if you do decide to pick one of these up. So the first thing that I love about the Flow is just how quick and easy it is to get your phone mounted and start shooting. Mount the clamp to your phone, attach the clamp to the very strong magnet on the gimbal, unfold the Flow and in just a moment it auto powers on, auto balances and gives you a notification you can tap to instantly open the Insta360 app and get shooting faster. Really all you have to do is make sure that you've got the clamp roughly centered on the back of your phone to keep things balanced, but it will tell you if you need to adjust it. And this is one of the strongest smartphone gimbals on the market. This holds phones up to 300 grams. I've been using it with a 14 Pro Max. So even if future phones get a bit heavier, it should still work just fine. And there's a good amount of clearance on the clamp for the buttons on your phone. So it's not gonna keep hitting the lock or the volume. So shout out to Insta360 for thinking about that. And yeah, you can use it with a phone case too. Then when you're done shooting, you can fold up the gimbal, take off your phone from the magnet, which is a very strong magnet, by the way. It's a lot stronger than I was expecting. It doesn't feel like it's gonna come off unless I want it to. So that's not something that I've been worried about. And this thing is so small when it's folded up, you can easily fit this into your pocket and then put your phone in another. There's no need to keep taking that clamp off. That can just stay on until you're ready to shoot again. Or keep it in a sling bag if you're wearing those weird trousers with the fake pockets, what's that about? Anyway, the point is, it's incredibly portable. I took this with me on a trip recently. Comment below if you know where this is. The flag should help narrow it down. And you know, it never felt like it was getting in the way or that it was a chore to carry. I could deploy it quickly, get some shots, and then move on. Next is the stabilization. This thing is super responsive to your movements and there's a few different shooting modes which we'll get to later. But the Flow does an amazing job at smoothing out those bumps and shakes when walking or moving around, even on uneven surfaces. And it always keeps the phone level and the footage looking nice and smooth. Most modern smartphones have some sort of built-in software or optical stabilization now, which does work really well, but it can fall apart in lower light and it never looks quite as good as from a gimbal. The Flow has three axes of stabilization and movement, so that's the pan axis when the phone moves side to side, the tilt axis when the phone tilts up and down, and the roll axis when the phone rotates. And this is what keeps the phone level to the horizon. So depending on what shooting mode you're in, you can lock certain axes or have the gimbal follow your movements to get a nice smooth pan or tilt shot, or unlock the gimbal to get some really creative shots that would just be pretty much impossible to pull off with the phone handheld. And we'll go through those modes in just a moment. The other feature I love, and this is two features actually, is the Flow actually has both a built-in selfie stick and a built-in tripod. In fact, it's the only smartphone gimbal with a built-in tripod right now. The selfie stick extends to 22 centimeters, and this is really useful for giving you some extra reach if you're trying to film something high up or over a bunch of people's heads. Or if you want to flip the whole gimbal over, it automatically detects when it's upside down and it makes it even easier to capture some super low angle shots. Again, these are really hard to do handheld, especially when you're moving. The tripod is cleverly hidden away in the base. You can extend it out to give yourself an even bigger handle on the flow. If you've got big hands like me, then you'll appreciate that. And each leg can be extended further at a fold out into tripod mode. So now you can just set the flow down, record yourself, or take a panorama or a time lapse without needing any additional accessories. It's just built right into the flow, which is a brilliant bit of design. 
But if you do need more height, then there is a tripod mount on the base which you can use to mount it to a full-size tripod, so you've got that option as well. All the functions on the Flow are controlled through two main inputs. There's the smart wheel on the front and the trigger on the back. The smart wheel is easily reachable by your thumb, and the whole outside of the wheel actually moves. You can scroll the edge for some smooth zooming in or out, or give it a quick flick to quickly switch between the ultra-wide main and telephoto cameras. The face of the smart wheel kind of works like an iPod click wheel. You can swipe around it to cycle through the different shooting modes, as you can see below the LEDs. There's also a few buttons. There's a capture button, a standby power button, and a switch button for switching between the front and back cameras with a single press, or switching between portrait and landscape with a double press. And in the middle of the wheel, there's a joystick for making any adjustments to the pan or tilt to get your framing just how you want it. It's really well designed and simple to use, it didn't take me long to get used to the controls, and the entire gimbal can be controlled one-handed with just the smart wheel and the trigger. So there are four main shooting modes. Auto is sort of like a beginner-friendly mode, it locks the roll axis to keep your phone level, and it automatically adjusts the gimbal settings based on your movements. So if you're running, it's less sensitive and more stable, and if you're still walking, it's more sensitive and follows your moves more quickly. In follow mode, the gimbal again locks that roll axis, but it allows the tilt and pan axes to follow your movement so you can get some nice smooth panning or tilting shots, maybe for something like a reveal shot. Pan follow locks the roll and tilt axes so you can get some nice panning movements without the gimbal tilting up and down, essentially locking the shot to the horizon. And FPV unlocks all three axes so you can simulate some first person like movements and POV shots. You get this kind of flying effect as the gimbal follows how you move. And you can control the roll of the phone by using the zoom wheel and this is pretty cool. You can get some really unique shots and perspectives that are just not possible to do smoothly if you were holding your phone handheld. The gimbal really does all the work for you. Now the Flow isn't waterproof or designed for anything too extreme like extreme sports so for things like that check out Insta360's X3. It's a waterproof and durable 360 camera that captures everything around it and it has some pretty cool and unique shooting modes so I'll link to my video on that below as well. One of the absolute best and most powerful features on the Flow is the AI tracking. You can enable it with a single press of the trigger or just by dragging on the viewfinder in the Insta360 app to select and track a person or a pet or even a building or a landmark. There's also gesture control too, you can enable that in the app so you can start tracking and recording by just raising your hand, super useful for filming solo. But what makes the AI tracking so powerful on this gimbal is that it has person re-identification. So if you're tracking someone and they go behind a tree or they get too far away or another person walks in front of them, the flow is smart enough to keep tracking the original subject and to continue tracking them again, even if they become obscured or blocked. I've not seen anything like that on a smartphone gimbal before. Other gimbals would just lose track of the subject or they'd get confused by the second person and track them instead. And most gimbals will disable the tracking after about three seconds or so, but the flow has always on tracking and will continue to wait for that person to come back into the frame and continue to track them again when they do. It can also track a subject as you move around it and it changes shape, very smart and really useful for things like hyperlapses where maybe you're moving around a building or something. Another thing I really like is that you can use the joystick to adjust the framing and composition. You're not stuck with having the tracked subject in the center of the frame. You can move them off to the side to create a bit more of a cinematic look which makes it a great tool for someone who is wanting to practice filmmaking or shoot some short films on their phone. Or if you wanted to use this for vlogging, the tracking is just so good and precise, it can really help you out if you're a solo creator and you don't have a second person handy to film you with a camera. The flow has got you covered. So just to mention, you can use any camera app that you want with the flow and you'll still be able to use the gimbal and have access to all the shooting modes. But to really take advantage of all of the features, then you're gonna to need to use the Insta360 app, which is a really good app, so that's not a bad thing. It's got a load of features and settings for more casual or pro users who are more comfortable with manual controls, which is great to see. Settings for enable a grid, a histogram, changing how sensitive the gimbal movement is and the tracking sensitivity. You might wanna lower these to slow the gimbal movements down to get some more cinematic feeling footage. 
Under the camera icon, you've got auto and manual settings. I've had this on auto most of the time, especially while I was away, just to keep things simple. But you can go into manual mode to set your shutter speed, your ISO, and your white balance, which I'm really glad to see that they included. And the flow is actually strong enough to be able to support a 14 Pro Max with an ND filter mounted to it. So you can get that nice smooth motion blur and lower your shutter speed. You've then got resolution and FPS settings, and not all features can be used in 4K60, by the way. You won't be able to use the hand gestures or the built-in filters, for example. Speaking of which, there's a ton of built-in filter styles designed for certain looks or places or times of day, and these get baked into your footage, so if you find one that you like, you can keep it on and keep a consistent look to all of your clips without having to add a filter on after with a different app. It makes it so much easier for showing to socials on the go. Then along the bottom of the app, we've got all of the photo and video modes. Some of my favorites are panorama mode. You can choose the size of the panorama, hit shutter, and then the flow just does its thing and captures a bunch of images and stitches them together. And you can capture these 360 degree panoramas by reverse mounting your phone in the clamp. And then after it's captured all of the stills, you have this massive image that you can pan around in and reframe or add some animation effects and filters. Then there's just your standard photo and video modes. In time-lapse mode, you can set the interval and duration and add in some camera movement, either just a basic horizontal pan or a custom movement with up to four keyframes. Time shift is like a time-lapse captured while moving, sometimes these are known as hyperlapses, and these are really cool for showing a fly through of a city. You can use it with deep track too to track a landmark and have the flow do all the work as you move through a space. Widescreen mode adds some black bars to the top and bottom of the frame and auto applies one of the film filters. And that's great for a quick and easy cinematic look. Now the app has another really cool feature if you're someone who is new to gimbals or filming with your phone or if you ever need some ideas and inspiration on how to film a scene and it's called the Shot Genie. And this is like your own personal AI shooting assistant. You can find it by tapping the green clapperboard icon in the corner, and then you basically just tell it what you wanna film. Just say something like, I'm in the park, or cooking a meal, and it will show you the most relevant template. And if it's something that you like the look of, you can tap, I want to film, and now you'll be guided through each shot that you need to film in sequence one by one. A really nice feature if you ever get stuck on ideas or how to shoot a scene, and there's a ton of templates in the library that you can look through if you're not sure exactly what you want. And if you have the scene recognition enabled, the app even analyzes the current scene and can suggest a Shot Genie template on the go that you might want to use. You might not need the Shot Genie if you know what you're doing, I turned off the scene recognition to stop the pop-ups. But for any beginners out there, I think you'll find it really useful having that extra assistance. I've also been really impressed by the battery life. The Flow has a 2,900 mAh battery, which lasts all day long, up to around 12 hours, so you've got plenty of shooting time. But what's really neat is it actually has an output port near the clamp, so you can charge your phone while you're using the Flow, or just use the Flow as a power bank after a shoot. They sent me the Creator Bundle, which comes with these short phone cables, and a few more nice extras like a carry case, strap, and this LED light that can snap onto the flow and you can use to keep yourself illuminated if you're vlogging in low light. And just to mention quickly, yes, you can use mobile lenses with the flow. I know some of you are gonna ask. Now, I've not tried every lens that I have or in every gimbal mode, but I have tested it with some of ShiftCam's upcoming lenses. They're anamorphic, wide, and tele, the main ones that you might wanna use for video. And they all work just fine with the gimbal despite their weight and my heavy 14 Pro Max. I did slide the clamp towards the lenses a bit to help keep things more balanced. And I did have to shoot with another camera app as the Insta360 app doesn't let you hard select a camera. It would switch to the ultra wide and you'd see the outside of the lenses instead. Comment below with any specific lenses you want me to try and I will try and do that for you if I have that mobile lens. I mainly have Shiftcam, Sandmark and Moment lenses. So. That's the flow. This thing has so many features that make it great from the portability, the fast deployment, the incredibly clever AI tracking, the one-handed control with the smart wheel and all the shooting modes you could need. It even has a culture mount so you can wear a wireless mic and record yourself at a distance and get even better sound quality. And the design is sweet too. I love the semi-translucent look. 
There's really nothing bad I have to say about it. The only thing I'd like to see added is more options in the camera settings panel. It would be nice to be able to shoot in auto with the option to manually set the white balance instead of having that be on auto as well. And it would be nice to have a 1.33 and 1.55 anamorphic de squeeze option too, and a way to hard select and lock which camera you want to shoot with, seeing how well the flow actually works with mobile lenses. This is Insta360's first smartphone gimbal, and yet it's a really well thought out product. It does not feel like a first gen product at all. It even auto rotates back to portrait when you leave the app to check a text or something. And it's those little things that just make it so great. It's a great accessory for content creators, shooting travel videos with, daily life, or for anyone that just wants to shoot something more cinematic. Movement can really add so much to the feel of your footage and just take it up a level. All in all, it's a really impressive bit of kit. And if you want to check it out for yourself, I will link to it in the description. Apologies for my husky voice. It is slowly getting better. So thank you for sticking with me. If this video helped you out, you can let me know by hitting the like button, comment below and tell me what you'd shoot with the flow. And if you want to see more tech videos from me, hit subscribe and the bell. Thanks to Insta360 for sending me this review and to you for watching and I will see you in the next one.